OK, so the last theorem of uh, last time, I just rem remind you, lemma, OK, let me call it lemma 4. So we prove that if uh, f is uh, bounded and measurable, Uh, on a b and if you have if you define capital f of x as the integral the lebe the integral between a and x of f of t in dt then we saw that the derivative of f is equal of capital f is equal to f and small f uh, almost everywhere in uh, okay in a b okay now uh, we want uh, somehow to generalize this result so here uh, we had bounded and measurable function which in particular are integrable function okay okay so indeed in fact we want to prove this result for uh, starting by a function small f which is uh, which is integrable okay Okay, this will be a theorem. Okay, so indeed we start f from a b to a b an integrable function. Okay, and again we uh, we assume and let capital F of x equal to a of x f of t in dt. The okay, then we we get basically the, the same conclusion. Then f prime of x is equal to uh, f of x almost everywhere in a b okay okay now we prove the proof okay so somehow to simplify the proof we assume that f is uh, non negative Okay, otherwise, if it is not true, as usual, you, you consider the positive part and the negative part separately, and then you put everything together. So, in your opinion, how could you... Of course, I mean, the idea is that we want to use this, no? Because we already know something. So how can you somehow use this? The idea is to construct uh, some, starting from this f, some bounded function, which approximate f in some way. So the idea is an idea that we already we already use. We define so we define some function, a sequence of function fn has the minimum between what? F and uh, f and n. Okay. So this satisfies this this requirement. So you have that fn is less than n, fn is less than f and we 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 define the corresponding uh, the corresponding integral okay so let me okay so we consider Gn capital Gn of x. No, actually, this is the difference between the two. Anyway, this is f of t minus f of n t in dt. Okay, we have that. Uh, 
in view of this, we have that G Gn is increasing, is an increasing C, is inc G G G Gn as a function, okay, is increasing. Because this is positive, okay, not as a sequence. And uh, hence, for the Lebesgue theorem, we know that it is differentiable almost everywhere. Theorem, theorem uh, is differentiable almost everywhere. And moreover, we have also that Gn prime is larger or equal than zero. This is always a consequence of the Lebesgue theorem. Okay, and then by the previous theorem, previous lemma by Okay, we have that this on derivative of this <laughs> t is equal to f of x almost everywhere in AB. Moreover, you have also that f of x so we use the definition and then we split this uh, f in uh, in two parts we add and subtract uh, the same quantity f of n a x so f n okay first uh, for instance okay f minus f n so this is Gn plus um, okay, so I continue to write here, okay, plus a b no a x, sorry. A x uh, of a fan, okay? Of a fan. So what we have is that f prime of x is equal to g n prime plus f n almost everywhere in a b. Okay, now we observe that we know that this is positive, or rather no negative. So we have that f prime of x is larger or equal than fn of x almost everywhere. And then since we know that if we pass to the limit with respect to n, we know that the sequence fn converges pointwise to f, so passing to the limit, we have that f prime of x is larger or equal than f of x almost everywhere. <laughs> So we have that mm. 
minus f of a. And okay, we have this. Moreover, we have that since f is an increasing function, being f larger or equal than 0, we have by the Lebesgue theorem Okay, so we are almost done. So we have that and then we have that A B. OK, since we know that this, uh, this the, the integral has a sign, OK, then we have that th this difference must be 0 almost everywhere. And so, and so we are done. OK, so now let me just remind you a bit what we did before, a little repetition. Somehow you have f when we introduce the BV function in R. For instance, you have x and y in AB. And for instance, consider x the case when x is less than y. And you have a subdivision a equal to x naught less than x1 less 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 than uh, xk less than x <laughs> and then uh, you have x naught x1 xk xk plus 1 uh, or or rather put it x and this is is equal to y for instance okay we define the positive variation and the negative variation and with this we define the total variation so just let me so you have that p a x is equal to the sum of the positive part i on to k of x i minus f x i minus one. I, okay, this is of course like this. And the negative part p a y. You have k plus one of the same. Uh? 
it's P A and X or P minus X? P A, uh, in the sense that uh, you start by s uh, from A. Okay, but okay, okay, you can also get rid of this. Plus F Y minus F X positive part. So we already saw that this is increasing. And okay, the same, you, you can repeat the same for the negative variation. And so you have that, if you remember, we saw that we can split F into uh, increasing function. So you have, you had G of X that was equal to P A X F plus F of A and H of X, which was just the negative variation. Okay. Okay, now we prove this theory, theorem. So it's a function. Uh, we assume that f is in BV. So it admits uh, the composition as uh, the difference between two increasing function. And then what we want to prove is that uh, if you take the integral over a b of the absolute values of the derivative, which of course it, we know that exists almost everywhere, this integral can be bound, can be controlled by the total variation of uh, uh, of the function f over a b okay so can you see an example for which it holds the strict sign There is always the same example that are OK, for example, if you, if you take a, a, a jump or <laughs> yeah. So proof. And uh, OK, we, we start by considering this fact that you have f prime of x is equal to, as we said, so we have that f is e so f, I remind you, is g minus h, okay? We know that it is in BV, so there exists this g and h, which are this one, no? Which are increasing, so we have that also the derivative. You have g prime of x minus h prime of x. Uh, okay, uh, I recall you that they're increasing, so the uh, g and h are increasing, so the derivative has a sign. So this is, uh, sorry, g prime of x plus h prime of x, okay? Okay, so the idea here is to use, uh, 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 to use the Lebesgue theorem, okay? Okay, so we, we, we integrated this, uh, this inequality. We want to use the Lebesgue theorem for those two, okay? This is less or equal than AB g prime of x in dx plus AB h prime of x. Okay, now we use at this point the back. Uh, okay, the back theorem will less or equal. This is by the back. 
okay, theorem. So we know that this is less or equal than GP, G evaluated in B minus G evaluated in A plus HB minus H H A. Okay. Okay, now we have to observe some fact okay, which are easy but just Okay, so GB, what is GB? How can you express G of B? Is P A B of F, I mean, this is actually by definition, okay, because we define them in this way, so G of A is just F of A, okay? F of A, while H of B, was the negative variation of, um, of f and h of a was, was zero, no? Because it's the negative, you replace b with a, so it's zero. Okay, so you substitute uh, this uh, equality here, so what you get at the end, you have, uh, so p a B, uh, okay, F plus F of A uh, minus F of A, so those two cancel out, and plus an A of B because this is zero. So indeed, what you find at the end is, is the total variation, okay, because the total variation was uh, the sum of the positive one and the, and the negative one, okay, T A B. So to have the, uh, uh, the quality here, we will have to introduce more regular functions somehow, okay? And, uh, okay, so before I introducing the notion of, of absolute continuity, uh, maybe we can see a um, kind of exercise if you want about BV function. Okay, so you have two function. We we'll start by a function f in a b with the values in r, and you have g, which is a function in a b, which is integrable. Sorry, integrable. Okay, and what we know is that for any uh, couple x and y in AB, the following inequality holds. So you have that f of y minus f of x is less or equal than x y g of t in dt. So what we want to prove is that under this hypothesis we have that somehow this is enough to prove that f is of bounded variation, is in BB. Okay, what we know is, for instance, that the indefinite integral of this function, g, g, b in g integrable, is in bv. We proved this, okay? So, so we know, as first, the first thing that we can observe, that, uh, for instance, if you define with big G, g of x, the integral between a of x of 
gt in dt uh, this is in bv okay this belongs to this in bv because g is integral <sighs> okay okay this is a first remark and then we, we we try to 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 find some symmetry here okay so you have that f of y minus we know this okay but maybe we can express this integral in terms of of big g okay so this is equal to ax no actually ay in gt in dt minus a x g of t in dt okay so so somehow we have here a function of y, he, here is also a function of y, here you have a function of f, here you have a function of f. So I, I, I will put this here, so everything is finite because g is integrable. So what I found is that f of y minus a y uh, g t is less or equal than f of x plus a x g t in d t. Okay, so which property has if you if you define this that as h of y, this is h of x. Okay, you you know. So which property has this function? The, the h I mean I mean, uh, for instance, uh, x uh, is less than y, no? And you and you see that h of y is less than h of x, so it's monotone, no? It's monotone. Okay, so you have that this the function h h is is monotone. So in particular, monotone function is in BV, no? So h is h is in BV. Okay, so basically we are done, no? Do you see why? So, because we, how can you express F? H plus the, the integral, no? And so we know that the, the, this one, I, we already s see that is in BV. No, now we'll write. <laughs> So uh, in this way, we, with, this, uh, with, with this argument, we can express f as the sum of two function, two BV function, okay? Because you have that in general, you have that f of x is equal to um, h x uh, pl uh, yeah, plus g x. So this is in BV because it's a monotone function. Is there? And this is in BV because uh, because we observe uh, right from the beginning that uh, this is in BV because G is integrable. Okay, so f is the sum of of two f uh, of fun two functional bounded variations. So it is also bounded variation. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, sure. Thank you. Yes, 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 yes. So, so just just to be h of x is f of x uh, minus a x g t in d t. Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Now. Uh, we introduce a new concept uh, which is the absolute continuity, you already know this, so okay. ok, 
okay. Okay, the definition is the following. So you have f from defined in a b with values in r is said to be absolute, <laughs> absolutely continuous. on a b of course if uh, for any epsilon positive there exists a delta positive such that you have the following you have that the sum of i1 and f of x prime minus fxi you, you consider the sum of, the, of, of this increment um, is less than epsilon for any finite collection sit here Okay, for any finite collection <coughs> xi, xi uh, prime. Hmm? Uh, you have f evaluating the point xi prime. It's it's, a, it's not a derivative. It's a prime. <laughs> And uh, minus f evaluated in uh, because you you have you are considering these uh, these intervals, okay, of non overlapping um, intervals, okay, and these intervals must satisfy the fact that the sum i. Uh, uh, n x i prime minus x i should be less than delta. Okay, just I recall you just to, to give you somehow the link with uh, maybe a notion which is more familiar to you. I, I recall you that what it is a uniform continuous function. So you have that if f in a b, the values in r, uh, is such that For any epsilon, there exists one delta positive, which in principle this delta depends only on epsilon and not and on the point. Uh, okay, such that such that f of x minus f of y is less than epsilon for any for. Uh, x and y is such that x minus y is less than delta, okay? So in somehow, okay, uh, this is a, a uniform continuous this function. Okay, absolute continuity, we will also abbreviate this with AC. So you have that 
if uh, f belongs is absolutely continuous then f is uniform continuous you just take the definition with uh, for just one um, one one interval okay Uniformly continuous. For me, sorry, continuous. Okay. Okay. So beside this, we will s we will see now other example of uh, of function in AC. Okay. For instance, Lipschitz function is in AC. Okay, so do you do you know what it is a Lipschitz function? Okay, just record this example. Okay, so you have that if f is in a b with values in r. Uh, is Lipschitz. Okay, then F is in AC. Okay, the proof. So you know uh, that there exists that for any by definition of Lipschitz, for any x and y in, in, in the interval, you have that there exists, uh, okay, let's do it more properly. You know that there exists an L positive such that for any x and y in a, b, you have that f of x minus f of y is less than Lx minus y. Okay. And then, if when you fix, uh, if you fix epsilon, and you that now we want to want to prove that f is in AC. So uh, let epsilon positive and fix delta to be equal to epsilon divided by L. Okay, now we study the, the increment. So, and we assume that we have that, okay, you assume that we have a collection of interval such that bi minus ei is less than delta. Okay, then we are done because you have that if you if you if you compute the the increment along these uh, these points uh, no b i minus i i from 1 to n so then by definition of by the lipschitz property this is less than l E i okay, this is equal to l less or equal than then um, the delta okay and then if you want if you take l equal to by our choice you you get actually that is less than epsilon okay and then other example Okay, so so we come back uh, if we if you have g our integrable function 
so g integral okay then we we consider this function f of x has the indefinite integral between a of x of u of t in dt. So we saw that it is in bv, but it is more than in bv, it is in ac. Uh, uh, it belongs to ac. Okay, so you consider a partition family of this joint in yeah. Uh, for instance, call them x i, y i, i from one to n. B okay. Be the family no, of this joint uh, interval that appears in the definition of a IC function. Be a, f be a family. Okay, of these joint intervals. Such that we have that the sum of their length <laughs> is less than uh, is less than some delta. Okay, now we want to <laughs> um, Okay, to study the increment of f along this uh, this uh, this family of intervals. Okay, so you have f i from one to to n. So f y. Okay, now you use the definition, and this is the sum. of x i f of t t and then then you can say that this less uh, no uh, sorry g g is less or equal than sorry to y y i okay Uh, okay, x i y i g t in d t, and then okay, and then um, I mean th these are disjoint intervals, so you can say that it is uh, equal to the union of x i y i of uh, g t in d t. Okay, this is the union over i, which goes from 1 to, to n, because they are disjoint, okay? So now, which theorem would you use here to say that somehow if the, if the measure of, uh, of the set where you are doing the integral is small, also the integral is small, provided that g is integrable, of course. Maybe the, <laughs> the name of a c function should, should, help, should help you. So we are trying to prove that this function is absolute continuous, absolutely continuous. But at some point when we, we were doing measure theory, we proved that uh, what we call the absolutely continuous continuity of the integrals. Okay, you remember? Okay, so by, by the absolutely, absolutely continuity. of the integral. So what does it tell you, this property? It tells you that if you have that for any epsilon positive, there exists a delta positive such that you have a set A which has small measure less than this delta, then the integral over A of G, or, or G must be integrable of course, no? 
g t in dt is less than epsilon. Okay, this was the theorem. And so basically you apply uh, that this theorem. So A becomes this union. And so you, you fix the delta, you fix the epsilon no, at the beginning, and your delta will be the delta of the delta that will be the delta uh, given by this by this theorem. Okay. So uh, A is the union of A I B I. Okay, and then just a, a brief remark. Um, um, so somehow um, the the absolutely continuity is a um, is a weaker concept wi with, res um, with respect to the, the Lipschitz one. Okay, so. A, f a function which is Lipschitz is in AC, but the converse is not true. And how would you, can you construct an example, an example of a function which is in AC? I mean, in view of, of course, of what we already done. <laughs> so take this into account. How would you construct an example of a function which is in AC, but is not Lipschitz? So I, rem I recall you that a Lipschitz function is differentiable almost everywhere, and the derivative is bounded. Okay. But I mean, you just observe that a function to be integrable, g, need not to be bounded. Okay. So basically, if you construct a function, if you define a function f, and you take some g which is integrable but not bounded, there exists a function which are integrable but not bounded, okay? Then you are sure that your f is in, um, is absolutely continuous b in view of this, uh, of this result. But this function cannot be Lipschitz because the derivative would be g, and if you take g not bounded, it cannot be Lipschitz, okay? Okay, this is just a, a remark. Okay. Okay, then prove uh, the following. Okay, so you have, you start by a function which is in AC and we want to deduce that AC is stronger than being in BV. So we want to prove that if A is in AC, then F is of bounded variation. Okay. Okay, so we start by Okay, we consider for instance, just to fix the idea. Uh we consider so we fix, uh, for instance, epsilon equal to 1. And, uh, but then, of course, you, 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 can, you can do it for, for any epsilon. And delta, the delta corresponding to this epsilon, and these are the epsilon and delta which appear in the definition of, uh, of uh, AC function, OK? Uh, of what appearing. Of AC. 
Okay, and then, okay, we want to prove that f is in BV, so how we proceed? We, we take a subdivision of AB, and we want to see that it is, it is bounded, okay? So let uh, A equal to x naught minus x1 minus minus, um, okay, xn equal to B, uh, B a partition of AB. Okay, so here, the idea is that we want somehow um, to make thicker the subdivision, adding some extra point, which are chosen in a suitable way, of course, okay? Uh, so we, we add somehow to this uh, uh, partition, The point, uh, points of the type of the type A plus J delta prime. Okay, take delta prime less than the delta there. And um, with j, which goes from, for instance, 1 to n, okay, where n is the greatest integer, okay, it's the greatest integer such that a plus n delta prime is less than b, okay? A plus n delta prime is less than b. Okay, I call this new partition obtained by adding this point with the letter y, okay? With x is, is, the, is the original one. With y, I call the, the partition obtained by adding these extra, extra points, okay? So let, uh, uh, just to fix the idea, so let a uh, equal to y0, y not y k equal to be uh, the new subdivision, okay? Okay. So we compute the total variation, but with, I mean, uh, com referring to the, this first partition, so uh, let t equal to the sum from i, which goes from 1 to, to n of f of xi uh, minus, goes from xi minus 1. Okay, then we use the triangular inequality and this new partition, this is less or equal than Okay, so we, we can divide this sum into two parts somehow. Uh, so we can divide, we can divide this <coughs> sum into N capital N parts, <laughs> which are the points 
y i which lies in for instance in a in the in the interval of this type so then you have a plus delta prime and a plus 2 delta prime and so on until until uh, um, until a plus n minus 1 delta prime and uh, a plus n delta prime so we consider now the sum over this point okay so consider the sum over the point y minus 1 y i which are contained in a a plus delta prime so now i, I focus on on, on the first interval, okay? But then I can... Uh, yi minus 1, yi, which are those points of the time uh, which are contained in this, uh, in this, uh, in this interval, okay? Oh, okay. And so you have that fy, y minus f minus 1 is less than 1 because because uh, we use the absolute continuum because by the uh, the absolute continuity we have that the measure of this less than delta prime, in particular less than delta. So if, so if we repeat, okay, this has been done for, for, um, for the first inter interval, okay, but you of course you can repeat this for any, uh, f for any of, of, of these intervals, okay. <coughs> so repeating the argument for any j uh, probably from one When and summing up okay we have that This is less, so, so let me write here. Then the sum for y i minus 1 contained in A plus J 
delta prime plus j plus one prime and let j goes from one to n. Now actually j goes from from zero to n because you have to include also a Okay, so F Okay, the, we prove that I mean the sum this is less than than 1, okay? The one times n plus one. So I mean, it's, it's not correct to write. It's not really correct. I mean, w what I want to say is that uh, if you fix if you fix j, you know, uh, if you take this sum for j fixed, uh, you, we prove that is less than than one. Okay, we we proved before here. Okay, and then uh, when you let j vary from zero to n, you you get that uh, all the sum is less than. Any in any case, this is finite, and uh, uh, n this big n doesn't depends on the partition that we the one with x doesn't depend with uh, of the original partition that we fix. Okay. It was capital N it has more to do with the, with the, with the, um, with the definition of absolute continuity. So when you pass to the supremum, uh, if we take take the soup, we have that. Um, the total variation of a b of f is finite, okay? And this concludes the proof. So as a corollary, <coughs> so you have that if f is in BV, okay, then f uh, um, has a derivative almost everywhere. No, sorry, f if f is in AC. As f has a derivative. So why? So far, okay. Okay. So if you have a function which is in is absolutely continuous and if in addition you know and if such that you know that 
we know that is a derivative, so you can. We know that is zero almost everywhere in A B. What we can deduce? We know that f is constant in A B. Okay. So if f is in C1, it's trivial, but now we have to, to extend okay, this. Okay, this is equivalent to show that, okay, so this means, um, for instance, to show that that for any C in AB, we have that F of C is equal to F of A. Okay, so consider the set E. So it is a subset of AC uh, such that uh, F prime exists and it's equal. It's and it is equal to zero. So it's true almost everywhere we consider this set here. And then we fix a point x in this set E. So let x a point in E. And then, by definition of, uh, of derivatives, so what we have that for any uh, eta positive ar um, arbitrary small, uh, we have that there exist infinitely many h positive. such that you have, okay, arbitrary small okay, such that you have that x, uh, x plus h is in a c and uh, you have that fx plus h uh, minus f of x is less than eta times h. Okay. So the, the, the reason why is that uh, if you have this, uh, you, di you divide this by h, you have that the, the incremental quotient is less than eta. And this, this, this incremental quotient can be arbitrarily small because f prime exists and it is equal to zero. Okay. Okay, and then here we uh, maybe this recall you something. No. <laughs> The Vitali, the Vitali lemma. So we have that 
the, the family. The family x x plus h uh, covers e the set e in the vitali sense So what we can infer, so by the Vitali lemma, there exists some, for instance, call it, uh, that we have that for any delta positive, there exists a finite collection of disjoint intervals collection uh, we call it uh, so of the type uh, xi, xi plus hi, for instance, with, uh, with the index i, which goes from 1 to n, okay, such that they almost cover e. Okay, such that you have that the measure of e if you remove from E the, the union, this finite union, the measure of this set is, uh, is still small, is less than delta. <coughs> and moreover, we also have that For this point, you have that fx plus hi minus fx i is less than eta times hi, which, I, which goes from 1 to, to n. Okay. Okay, assume that just to fix the idea that we can we can order them, they are disjoint, so you can assume that they are ordered in, in this way, this point. Collection, okay, so you have to assume that. You have, for instance, xi is less than xi plus hi less than plus 1 less than x, plus 1 plus h, i plus 1. And so then you take, uh, you take this partition, So x2, you have uh, x2, blah, 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 then you have xn, xn plus hn, and nv, and nc, sorry, because we are, this is, is a partition of Okay, now we use uh, the definition of AC. 
Okay, so fix some epsilon positive and let delta the corresponding uh, uh, and let delta the corresponding uh, parameters no, in the in the definition of AC function, okay, of the definition. Okay, then we have Okay, consider this sum x1 minus a plus i So somehow here we are within this set of small measure, okay? So we are in the complement of the finite covering, okay? So this is less, okay, or rather this is, okay, okay less than the measure of AC less than this finite union. Um. Which is less than delta. Okay, then we have that since f is in AC, you have that the corresponding increment fx1 mi oh, sorry, minus f of a plus uh, the sum plus 1 minus fx plus h plus <coughs> so hn is less than epsilon. OK, this comes from the fact that it is in AC and call it star. So here we, we use the fact that it is in AC. For, for the other point of the partition, we use the fact that the, the derivative is, um, is 0. And uh, you have that for the other point. The one of the of the Vitali Vitali lemma, no? Okay. Okay, this is less than eta times the sum of H I. And okay, they are disjoint. This is less or equal than eta times c minus a, and call this two dot. Then you sum up the two sums, so this one and this one. No, I'm sorry, this one and this one. So sum up.
Okay, we have that. Okay, plus plus, you have fxn plus hn minus f sen plus fc minus fxxn plus hn. Okay, and this is less than Here, huh? here was from one to to n. No, it's the same. Uh, probably it's ah okay. It's uh, yeah n minus one. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. If you sum up, then what you obtain is less than uh, epsilon plus eta times c minus a. OK, so th but this, is, this can be chosen arbitrarily small. So at the end, what you have is that indeed f of a is equal to f of c. And so f is constant. Okay, I think that for for today we can we can stop here.